and welcome everybody out there in Twitch and D&D &D land to the newest session of the Solemn Sagas. Now, before we jump right into the action, as per usual, we have a few short announcements that we have to make. The first of which is our actual announcement that I made on Sunday. Uh, I'm excited for this one. Let me let me put that in. Announcement. Boop, there it is. So on Sunday, I tweeted out that I am going to be starting a cast show based out of my homebrew universe. We are looking for cast members. I've only confirmed one cast member as of now, and we are still looking for a dungeon master who wishes to take on the mantle of running as the first ever DM, aside from myself, inside of my universe. Uh, so if this intrigues you, definitely check out that tweet. Uh, keep in mind that this is going to be a paid cast. I am not going to be one of those content creators who go, ha ha, you get publicity. Uh, no, I don't do that bullshit. Uh, you'll be paid because you're working. And that's how capitalism works. But anyways, aside from that, if you are interested, definitely reach out inquire about it if you know of any creators out there on the internet who's still out of work maybe trying to get their foothold into this industry that might be a good outlet for them as well share it around on twitter give it access to them anybody who interacts with it it definitely does help and it may help you know improve a set of lives out there on the internet in addition to that if you are watching this you're probably on youtube right now you should definitely drop us a subscription, leave us a comment, like the video, all of that fun jazz. It does help out the algorithm and spreads us further out into the world so that everybody can interact with us and learn about this phenomenal community. If you want to support us by some more uh, traditional means, please consider going over to our Patreon and supporting that. It'll give you access to our private Discord server. And aside from that, Gamer Beans! If you are a gamer and you drink coffee, get yourself some Gamer Beans. Link will be in the description below, as well as the affiliate link right down there if anybody uses that exclamation point Gamer Beans. Uh, so I get a little cut of it if you buy beans using that link, so definitely use that link if you're going to be buying some beans. Thank you all very much. Gabe, tell us what happened last session. Last session we started off and rolled the top in the end, uh, finally getting... Uh, Restraints for N, uh, we put it to sleep and, and secured so the demon couldn't get loose and kill us all, all in our sleep. And then I forgot to note it, but I think everyone fell asleep and, and uh, Gabe and uh, Rowan ended up in a dreamscape, odd dreamscape, um, where Rowan uh, at one point apparently got to see where his mother is, but Gabe got them out of there before they were stuck forever. Uh, afterwards, uh, after getting Rowan to promise he, uh, she would not uh, let in lose until he, he got back, uh, he goes off uh, with Nothal in tow to uh, do some shopping um, and tr check on transportation. Then Gabe returns while Nothal uh, um, looks for a guy and a, a uh, goes for the trip. And of course, Gable finds in wide awake and released by Rowan. And anyway, uh, and, uh, and uh, decides she needs a bath, so we all they. both go. They need a bath, so that uh, we go to a um, bathhouse uh, so she can uh, wash up. They have the then we have the mid game break and um, at, at this time Nothal uh, who bounced over to uh, what Nothal was doing uh, looking around for a guy ends up getting pointed to an elven woman and um, doesn't get the goat he meets up with uh, at the spa uh, goes to find the woman at the spa along with a new player. Um, uh, Professor Fulcrum, and uh, after he confronts the woman, he ends up getting his ass knocked into a wall and almost drowned. Um, fortunately, Anne and uh, the woman named Glinda get get along once Glinda finds out Anne is her uh, mother's champion. Um, then Rowan shows up. Uh, mainly for Joe's sanity, and then uh, we get to a proper uh, introduction of Fulcrum. 
um, everyone gets stoned except for Rowan and Gabe apparently uh, we go out to eat uh, do some shopping uh, everyone goes to sleep uh, and then Anne has a conversation while she's asleep with Obnixilis uh, hey. next day continue Anne has a conversation okay um uh Everyone ha heads out the next day, and and we start a, a pig competition. And um, it find and finds out they uh, uh, get a pet from their uh, patron, and um, ends up with a, a little dragon named uh, Barry. Um, uh, she's all uh, cued out, and end of the game. Already. So, everybody, you all began traveling towards the northwestern wall outside of Weldon Top, moving into the immediate tunnel system to traverse through the mountains to make it over to your destination, a place that was once called the Slayer's Guild. Now, unfortunately... None of you really know the way too terribly well, and you are putting all of your eggs in one basket with Galinda, hoping that she knows how to get there properly. In addition to that, N, you have an adorable new familiar that is curled around your neck like a scarf because you are warm, and warm is good. Yes, yes. <sighs> so you're all beginning to travel Nolf you took down a few notes on that ritual as well and now you're wondering if you could wrestle a boar maybe a goat maybe a basilisk maybe a giant op opossum maybe maybe would any of you like to do anything along your journey Galenda is walking the path. I am going to be mentally chatting with my little dragon, just getting to know them. Gabe will be watching her uh, them. farther back. Them farther back in the group. Okay. So marching order, we have Galenda at front. Who would encourage N to be up closer towards her? Mm hmm. N would listen. And then I'll <clears throat> take behind her. I'll be close behind. Are we doing so... two, like two behind? Are we doing like two by two? The tunnels are actually very wide, so you could probably fit three people side by side comfortably. Yeah, um, I'll be behind N, so I guess the same uh, uh, row as Fulcrum. Already, so we have Fulcrum and Gabe. Rowan would be dawdling at the back. All the way at the back. We're going right. this way. Oh. <laughs> yep. North Draco. Or oh, wait, Draco's not here yet. That's right. I probably beside Rowan ish. Beside Rowan. You left the two of them all the way in the back by themselves. Oof. Yeah, oh, that's perfectly fine. It'll be fine. Gabe notices that they, they're not close behind and uh, mentally asks uh, Beefcake to go keep keep them company and let them know if they get into, into trouble. Very well. Now, Draco, are you here? I haven't heard you speak up yet. Hello? Hello? Hang on. Hello? I heard you say hello. I it was trying to kick over to... Hello? Hello? Around? Around? <laughs> it's the disc... It, it's being weird. It's trying to kick over to not my actual headset. Hmm. 
check your uh, dongle, now. make sure it's plugged in all the way. It so, is now. I just checked it to make sure. You're coming through clear. So, Draco, you and Kothar stayed behind to speak with Leon Chi in private after everyone else was kicked out of the temple. I assume you've caught up on everything up until now? Yeah, yeah, I've caught up on a lot thanks to uh, Noel. Thank you very much, Noel. No so, problem. Check him informed. After the possession of N and Rowan, everyone else is now banned from this temple. They're only allowed to come back here one more time, and that is when they have the necessary component to perform the ritual to extract Obnixilis from N. Mm. The two of you stayed further back. Leon Chi expressed a concern with you. These people you're with, they have influence from the gods, but they have the naivety of children. This is concerning. Yes, yes it is. But I think with time, you could see that they are not just children in adult bodies. Kothar speaks up. We don't have time. Then maybe we will have to force a little maturity upon them maybe well the champions are only awoken when things are almost too late and well I've been thinking about what's going on with Phoenix and what's going on with that child the Darkin Mr. M Kothar kind of like rubs his large snout. Mm. I have to go deal with that. I was hoping I could have some help. But I don't think I can waste any more time waiting. Hmm. Watch them. I will. And uh, if Nolth acts up, um, kick his ass. I know you can, so it's not an issue. <laughs> hmm. I'm sure he'll be fine. He'll he'll try to to fill your shoes. Leon Chi turns to you. <laughs> I do have concerns about what is happening between all of them. Based off of what I've heard from you, <sighs> the world might be dire. I believe so. The ritual that Mr. M, stupid fucking name, is performing, I'm familiar with it. It was hidden here. How did we lose it? I don't know. Hmm. This temple has only been infiltrated one time since I took over as master. And that was from 
Jaki in his possession. Not sure what's happening, but if they snuck in and took that information, it is a concern. No one else here knows about it. We made sure that Solemn would not know. Go find them. <sighs> Try to see if they can be useful to us. I can feel a war coming. Hmm. So. On that note, <sighs> you excuse yourself flying back after your allies at incredible speed because you can fly. The mountains are easy for you. Everyone else, it's treacherous. <laughs> Kothar taking his leave. Heading over to <sighs> the mountainous plateau, he says. Hmm. And you swoop down, tracking after your allies. And as soon as they close that hulking door behind themselves, you all begin walking and hear it open. As you look back at Draco. Where the fuck have you been? I had to stay behind and clear a few things up. Um can't believe y'all thought y'all were going to get to leave without me. We have a guide. And we've... We knew we, you'd yeah. find us eventually. And we don't want to leave and possess forever. Where is the dragon? He... He had to go his own way for now. He told me to tell you all he was sorry, but it was... In the best interest of us all, of us all. Cape curses and just looks away. <sighs> well, no. I have a feeling we'll see him again before all this is done. I have a feeling too. Um, Draco, um, meet our guide and her friend. Um, this is. Galinda, she uh, is a daughter of the. God, I can't think of the word. Right, the name. Raging um, Tide. The Raging Tide, and her friend Professor Fulcrum. They've they're taking us uh, to get me unpossessed. It is a uh, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, Draco, with your high passive, you smell something here. A little skunky. Mm. <laughs> Can I roll to see what it is? Sure, roll a nature check. Oh, oh what I'm good at, right? Oh, yeah, that's I'm... meditation. Uh, incense. Also mm. known as weed. And it, it, it reeks in here. Uh, somebody's had some good meditation while I've been gone, I see. Ah, yes. Milt is just meditating humming right now kind of thing. That's one word for it. Is, is, he, is he okay? Milt is one with the Raven Queen. <laughs> is he ever okay? Is, <sighs> I'm, I'm serious. Is, is he dying? This, this... Well... Mm. No, I don't think. Well, Draca. Uh, Draco? Draca? Draco is fine. Draco. Welcome to the group. All you need to know is, um... Don't play any instruments on the way. Don't be too loud. You don't have to worry about that. Good. Well then, let us keep going. And she continues marching. Draco, where are you in the marching order? 
do do um I will I'll bring up the bag just keeping an eye out on everything okay do we want to go like two two three ish sure I don't care that's up to y'all I mean that works for me danger is danger regardless right three people with three people in the back to actually <clears throat> let me do this way uh, yeah um now that you're here, it might be uh, good if we have three people on the back to, you know, avoid any surprises from behind. Sure. That's fine with me. I was hoping we could all be quiet. Go ahead. BK gets a big snort at the fact that he's not considered a person. <laughs> Rude. So, uh, what is it? Belinda walks through this tavern, this cavern, as if it's second nature to her. There's no thought being invoked. There's no real hesitation in her footsteps. It's almost as if she's done this a hundred times. As she is walking through, she is going to, uh, be conversing with you, though quietly, and Gabe and Fulcrum, since the three of you are within earshot. So, you are a Louvergine's champion. That is uh, quite an honor. Most people, well, like us, don't even have the opportunity of meeting her. Listen. Uh, I met her in person first, actually. Really? Yes. Hmm. Wait, you went to the ocean? Not by choice. <laughs> yeah. She has a bit of a temper. She does, but... Warranted. Of course. I don't think I would have gotten along with her if she had been weak. Weakness is not in our mother's uh, vocabulary. Yes, so I... We... She made the uh, men that were with us take a challenge, and only Gabe is still with us. Um, with the group, but apparently I'm responsible for all of them still. Uh... Kind of put my, <laughs> and kind of put my my reputation on the line for them. Well, that's stupid. Putting your reputation on the line for men. She looks back at you, Gabe. But congratulations on passing. That is quite a feat. Thank you. If I know her, she probably ex set you up for failure. Yeah, I'm sure she tried. <laughs> But I'm curious about you. You reek of uh, devotion. Who are you devoted to? Are you talking to Anne or me? You. I'm not devoted to anyone. I I mean, in possibly, uh, <laughs> depending on how you define his devotion. Gabe, Gabe, sweetheart. Um, I don't think she means devotion in that way. No, I mean... Your will is strong. Like... How do I put this? I've met a handful of uh, people in my life who... have something they value so highly that everything else is secondary and they gain beautiful power from it. You reek like you have that level of devotion, but you say you don't worship? No. Really? That's a first. I mean, I'm... She gestures to herself, 
owed. And I've never met somebody like that. Just special, I guess. Maybe. What do you value, though? Hmm? Freedom, life, my friends. Hmm. Freedom, life, friends. Intriguing. Well, uh, how do I say this? Uh, I'll be keeping my eye on you. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Fulcrum. Uh, what languages do you speak again, Fulcrum? She would know this, I just forget. Yeah, uh, Celestial, Deep Speech, Dwarvish, Hungrel? Okay. Uh, she'll begin speaking to you in Hungrel. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I knew she was compatible with you in languages on at least two of them. Uh, Celestial and Hungrel. Okay. Um, so, she'll begin talking with you. He's curious. Usually you don't have people who have power from themselves yes very interesting I have not um, have not seen that before now the other two you hear a very guttural deep almost hissing and exhale of a language like between the two of them neither of you have ever heard that before in your lives Okay. I'm also going to guess that it doesn't the conversation doesn't last long enough for me to originally guess <laughs> no, languages, no. Does it? Uh, <laughs> the only person in the party who has a chance of hearing that does not have a passive high enough to hear it <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately Hungrul <laughs> is a special language only people who seek that knowledge will ever have it Gabe just ignores them, keeping an eye out on the surroundings, watching if they're for danger. Yeah. So, how about you? Have you done any uh, research into these people yet? Um, <clears throat> the ones that we are traveling with? No, I um, have been trying to study them some and see what I can learn from them. I have to say, the devotion to the big one, well, from the big one, notable. Mm. This one has potential. Gestures to you, Gabe, you do notice. <clears throat> I don't have a read on the Erinkakra or Druidus yet. She seems different. Can I roll an insight on Rowan and see what I picked up? Sure. So I don't so I don't meta game it. Sure. <clears throat> Not bad. Just from your interactions with Rowan, uh, Rowan likes her animal companion, the one in her pocket, uh, probably more than she likes most people. Um. She's trained him tremendous, like incredibly well. Uh, as far as rats go, you've never met one that aware of itself and others. Um, aside from that, you don't get a whole lot off of Rowan, except the vibe of someone who's kind of just going through life, like moving with the flows and tides of the world. Her um, <clears throat> companion seems most interesting. I don't think I've seen a rodent such as uh, that. Well, it's awakened. Yeah. yeah. Which is astounding. 
very much so. I wonder if that's why she seems to like, I think she called it Frank, more than others. Maybe. Maybe. I'm curious how it became awakened and... Uh... Because, you know, only only people like myself can do that. Yes, it's very interesting, especially if I remember right, she said she bought it from some gentleman that was selling it. Yes, but who would awaken a rat? And then sell it? Yeah. It's no sense. If I <clears throat> was not in the pursuit of knowledge, I would um, be making bank with that. taking it around, charging to see it. I don't think I would do that. That sounds cruel. Uh, yeah. I can see that. You know. But I would definitely enjoy having conversations. I might ask him sometime. Hmm. Let me know if you um, find anything out. I <clears throat> was not able to quite understand um, his squeaks and chirps. <laughs> You'll learn that language one day. It just takes a little more intuition. Ah. So, what do you think of N, though? Champion? <sighs> Interesting uh, character, N. Um, You're being kind. They, they don't not to make assumptions, but they don't look like a champion to me, and especially for the it's Raging Tide, right, Joe? Uh, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially a champion of the Raging Tide. I don't mean to be presumptuous, but I would have imagined someone a little different. Hmm. Especially, she said something about protecting the men or not wanting they the men. They said. Or they, yes, thank you. They said something about protecting the... Well, a Lou regime does not like men. With reason, of course. Yes, 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 yes. But... And that's, and that's why I'm surprised that they would, as a ch champion, or going into being a champion. I... It's curious. Find out more on that front. I may be too much of a uh, authority figure. Ah, uh, yes. At that point, the conversation will end. <coughs> so, this journey is going to take you roughly a week and a half. Do any of you wish to do anything along the way? Uh, I would like to do some wood carving. Really? Yes, uh, I've done it a long time ago by making a new one for end. My, uh, my dream catcher, my nightmare catcher, basically. I'd like to try to form another one for him. Okay, do you have any necessary materials on you? Uh, just sticks I find around while walking. I just so slowly start wood carving. It's not... I take the whole week just slowly doing it in my spare time while not walking. Okay. Gay make sure Anne is secured when she sleeps. And they. he keep They. Uh, and he keeps his clothes on uh, when uh, even when he's resting and uh, and maybe a uh, little sword workout to this room. Rowan wants to scavenge around for truffles. For truffles? Yep. Alrighty. Those good mushrooms. That did not work last time. They were common mushrooms. You about... <laughs> so. Gabe. Only, uh, oh, sorry. Gabe perception check. Um, Nolf, survival check. Rowan, survival check. I would like to oh. um, play around with my tarot card set. I haven't done that in a while. Are you just playing with them? Wanting to, like, learn their meanings, I guess. 
So you start flipping them, looking at them, researching just within your own thoughts. Mm-hmm. It's a very intuitive practice. Fulcrum, uh... Yeah. Your school of magic... Yes. ...has dealings in that regard. Hmm. Like, pointed dealings in that regard. Hmm. Just to let you know. And you do yeah. see N playing with those cards. Um, okay, and then I'm going to talk to N in just a second. And then just when we have little bits of, you know, campfire time or whatever, I'm going to be playing with my um, jeweler's kit just to try to... I'm working my way to becoming proficient with it. You know, I've got some small gems that I'm looking at and am trying to polish here and there and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> ah, um... And dear, I see your, um... I like your cards. Thanks. Um, found them somewhere and trying to figure out how they work. Have you... How long have you been playing with them? Um, I've had them for a while, but I really, I mean, a few hours at most, just Things have been really crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, we were supposed to do one thing for one person, and now it's months and months later, and I haven't had much of a chance to really get back to them. I see. They are quite, um, quite fun and interesting. The hardest thing that I know is when you start um, picking up a different oh, how do I timeline? Hmm. And that's when it appears the cards may not be uh, working as they say. So you know how they work? Uh, hmm. Dabbled some. Then here, and and I'll like hold them up. I haven't been able to really figure anything out. Show me. Uh, so you have no training at all. You just found them, and you've just been flipping through them, and yeah, they didn't uh, come with a book. I see. Not that that really helped. I'm not necessarily that. Uh, that's not what I'm good at. Uh. Professor Fulcrum, roll me a investigation, please. All right. Um, this... So, tarot cards are not actually false. Um, there is a level of magic that gets imbued into them based around the person who holds onto the deck, how close they become to it, and then the person they are trying to gain insight into. Um, so, the more attached an individual is to a, a tarot card deck, the more powerful it is. Uh-oh, we just lost someone. Rowan took yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. However, this deck is... <laughs> it's constructed very strangely. Um, you know what? Can I... It's. I know it's a little late can i do a chrono shift on that investigation yeah go for it i forgot i have that i forgot yeah I yeah that. yeah you have the ability to re-roll as a reaction timeline i love that feature oh it's so good yeah timelines and shit um <laughs> okay. about professor fulcrum's class yeah he's chill <laughs> <laughs> professor fulcrum everything i previously stated to you is 100 factual um, 
the more powerful a person's intuition into their deck and the more attached they are to it, the more accurate it will be in reading them. You subtly send energy from yourself into this deck, um, okay. and people who train in tarot cards can actually learn how to accurately, within a certain degree, tell the future outcomes of uh, events that can transpire. Um, in fact, that is one of the bases of your personal religion, um, is learning how to use something like this. Uh, though you're not proficient in playing cards, are you? No, not in cards. Okay. Um, you've never really sought that because your applications have been more direct in the way of manipulating magic. Um, right, right. This deck, actually, the symbology on it is foreign to your understanding. Okay. Um, not the fronts of the cards, the faces, uh, the back of it, the details of its origin. You're not familiar with it. And you've traveled all across Claimstead. You've spent a good amount of time in uh, Gravestake. Admittedly, you probably even passed through the other places, but you're not familiar with the origin of this deck, which is curious. Um, <clears throat> very interesting. Um, do you mind if I take a closer look? No. Um, go right ahead. If you can figure it out, that would that would help me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> lift up the deck, and I'm studying the back of the card. Um, I guess if people are paying attention, I'm actually looking at the backs of the cards and not the the faces of the cards. I'm studying those one card at a time, seeing how it reflects off the light. And... Now, and do you have a uh, depiction of what this deck looks like? I do not. Right. Um, actually, I could if you give me a second and I'd actually get my own deck. If you would like to do that, though I do have my own deck of cards that are canon to the world. Um, it's your call. You can do that one or this one. Yeah, let me get mine. Yeah, go for it. One second. Yep, yep. Gabe casts Divine Sense uh, to just check things out, see if he's got plenty of spell slots before he goes to bed. Whenever, yeah, before going to bed. Okay. Um, you're always aware of the presence of the demon there, of course. Though nothing else has sat on your radar within range. Um, and I ask Glinda, what kind, what kind of beasts uh, are we going to encounter on this trip? Ah, while we're in the mountains, you can... Oh, look at the puppy wag. Uh, you can expect... Uh, some monstrosities, horrors, beasts, stuff like that. Uh, some things that wish to turn you to stone. Some things that wish to eat you alive. Some that wish to poison you into paralysis and then eat you alive. Uh, and then others that wish to pick you up like a drumstick and bash you against the wall. Gabe says his... his uh shield to monstrosities I think was one of them I'll have to check that is one of them yes yeah he'll do that the one you can't pick is fiend and uh demon okay so I have my deck okay this is the back of them and it's got um a circle with swans deer foxes and turtles so which are Put your hand underneath it, like, to block the light of the screen. Ooh. Under it. Like, under it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's what. Okay. And it has... Oh, look, it's a puppy! Uh, it has turtles, you say? Yes. Turtles, deer, and... What was the third one? Foxes. And... Um, swans. Swans. 
Turtle, foxes, swans. And deer. deer. There's four. There's four, because the there's four suits. four suits. She really likes my cards. I guess I really <laughs> smell. That's fair. <clears throat> okay. So, Fulcrum, you're allowed yes. to roll an arcana or religion check on this. It is your call. Okay, we will go with arcana. Ah, pretty shitty roll. Hmm. So, somebody's click clacking very loudly. Having a Aww. Good puppy. It knows. Arcana. This deck currently has quite a bit of magic already imbued into it through the course of its possession on N. Uh, you get the insight that N is probably in a very, very emotional person. And the releasing of your emotions into something in your possession is actually a way that you can imbue it with magic. Um, so apparently through this entire adventure, N has been imbuing this deck with residual magic that they weren't releasing on a regular basis. Uh, in addition to that, this deck seems to have a natural aptitude to planetary divination ast astrological divination and do, 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 do. explorative di divination and it currently has enough in it for one charge that charge um if if they were to use that charge um is it like a wand where like if there's a chance where you use all the charges and it goes out or is, it just needs to charge up and if it goes down to zero it's at zero but it'll continue to charge up yeah you don't destroy the deck by using a charge okay. um it's just <clears throat> to make a deck of cards use this magic without guiding it in that direction um is a lot of magic um because it's just kind of like throwing fire in a random direction and only some of it is slapping against the object it's not like when you're a wizard and you focus a laser into something gotcha. and then get all of that energy into it at once okay just wanted to make sure before i told her she could try it they. at some point Oh, sorry, thank you. Before they tried it at some point that it wouldn't, um, you know, I'm blood and nothing. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I appreciate that. Yeah. This is uh, quite intriguing and interesting. Um, and there, I suggest that you keep this deck um more available to you. You said that you've only pulled it out a handful of times, a few times? Yeah, only a handful. I haven't seen one like this before. Um, I would suggest that if you could, and it, you know, fit your fancy, that you play with it, or at least go through it and spend time with it every day. Okay, I'll give that a try. Um, it seems that you are starting to create a bond with this deck, and that is a good thing when these, as far as these decks are concerned. Um, you want to be able to have them close and have that connection. Um, commune with them, if you will. And this one seems to have a natural uh, 
aptitude for planetary and astrological and exploratory, uh, explorative uh, divination. Um, and you know next to none of those words. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I... Yeah, so let me um, drop some knowledge on you. Let me break this down. Okay. <laughs> Handle these cards James every brain's day. brain's already fried. This is yep. going to be interesting. Just pull them out every day. Go through them. If you're feeling extra emotional, use them to calm you down. That I can understand. Okay. I will do that. And when you're ready to have it work at stuff, it... Um, has enough energy to give you one good reading. And by good, I don't mean um, positive. I just mean that good reading as in it will do well. Okay. But just enjoy it. Just play with it. Just make this your new friend. You can I even... mean, it's it's uh something to do to keep my wrists loose because getting in that fucking thing every night hurts. <laughs> uh, that's um maybe I'll have a look at it. Maybe they're um not adjusting it correctly. There's no, it's just the wear and tear. Uh. Yeah. Now G- Gabe knows what he's doing. Ah, so the two um, have used them before, prior to this. Yes. Oh. Uh, nice. Um. Yeah. It's so not Gabe. Gabe's sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But it's just it's been days now, so that kind of that kind of you know wears on you. I mean, I'm already starting to get like um knots in my fur and stuff from it that aren't mm. coming out and just yes yes well just you know go through your cards at night before you put on your spreaders and um maybe even have your dragon with you in your lap and then in the morning when you wake up use it to relieve some stress your dragon just bleps at you He's incredible, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Along the journey, Rowan... <sighs> I don't think that truffles grow in mountainous caverns, unfortunately. However... You do find green moss mushroom, which is kind of minty when you eat them. And if you fry them, they actually harden like hard candy. Hmm. 100% edible, you think. Um, up to you to trust your own intuition on that regard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Rowan's gonna collect a bag of them, take them back to camp, so we can all snack on them. Rowan oh, Ro- offers you all mushrooms. Ro- Rowan, what are those? No, no, let's not do this again. No. Oh, I'm already gonna be tied minty. up. Could, uh, <laughs> do a travel check, see if he knows anything about them? Uh, nature. It would be nature. Remember the last time you got, you got mushrooms, Rowan, that we ate? North, unfortunately, you are remember. not from the mountains or caverns. You're not that familiar. You ended up with a familiar and didn't even know it. So, I mean... I'll try them with Rowan if Rowan will eat some with me. Okay. Rowan, will, she'll take her little bag out and hold it out to North. Gail will also take one from you. Ah, wonderful. And just pops it. Um, I'll have one as well. Gabe definitely will not. He'll just be watching everyone, uh, making sure they don't go loopy and 
walk off. They kind of. Uh, Draco's not taking any part of the tea either. Yeah, that's fine. I would um, join you, but unfortunately, it's a fast night. No, it's just hungry. It's food. Frank, Frank gets one. Oh, thank you very much. Much appreciated. So, as soon as you bite into one of the buds of the mushroom, uh, it does kind of like bloom open as if rippling outwards against you. And... Ogin, no, I wouldn't do that. So don't ask. Come on, man. You know, you know better. You can refund that one. Catnap spell for one year. But anyways, as it blooms open, you're all hit with a very sweet minty flavor. Kind of like one of those little mint things that, you know, everybody's grandparents ever has. The dinner mints. Yeah, that's what they're called. I've never bought them, so I don't know. But Not they're good. Hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's soft. So the moment you chew on it, it kind of starts dissolving. I mean, I have to eat more. These are amazing. Uh, make it some more, Don. Uh, you yeah. should try frying them real quick. Here, uh, she pulls out a pan and, you know, assembles some sticks and then just <laughs> lights it. If anyone throws up, throw up over there and Gabe per, uh, points off to the side. Don't be such a stick in the mud, Gabe. Yeah, come on, Gabe. They also do wonders for muscle relaxation. Hey, come on, Gabe. I'm good. Hey, you... You, need, you guys need a designated mushroom or something. So, yeah. Ron will throw a mushroom at Gabe. Take him. Beefcake will jump up and eat it. <laughs> Beefcake, don't. No. Nope. Don't. Eating them down just because he's hungry. You know we have real food, right? Yeah. I'm hungry. But these are fresh. Sure. Most I guess I'm just frying some for myself so they last longer. They do I turn into hard some. candies. Ah, put it in the pan. And I'll put the ones that they that she. No, no, got me saying it that they got into <laughs> <laughs> the pan. You start frying them up, and afterwards. If you don't mind, if you make a couple for me for not tonight, but another night, I'd appreciate it. Yes, it's not a problem at all. It also helps with nausea as well. You know, uh, it's a very common thing for uh, the Duragad that grew up in this area to used to use this whenever their uh, women were with children. Morning sickness, I think they call it. I don't know. I've never experienced it. Mm. How about uh, all of you? Families? Hmm? father and two siblings. Oh, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wow, you None all here. are so talkative. <laughs> None here. None. No family. Mm. Were you orphaned? Yes, and the uh, uh, monastery has become like a family. Monastery. The temple. Temple. I feel like you are assuming I know things that I do not know. There's a Shinlei Temple. Uh, there's crap. There's a lot of them. Oh. I am unfamiliar with Shinlei. I apologize. You're fine. It's not well known in the world. Hmm. That's the way they like it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to explain. Yeah. 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 It's a temple. Hmm. So is this your devotion then? Uh, the temple or? Mm. I don't know about my devotion, but it is what I serve for now. I want to make the world a better place and mm. try to learn all that I can that's within it. Uh -huh. 
my kind of people. Oh, that sounds mm. sappy. <sighs> a bit. Yeah. Beefcake gobbles him down. Yes. <clears throat> she then turns over towards not you, Nolf. Instead, uh, Rowan. And you, family? Rowan will pat her fanny pack and say, Frank. Duh. I am like big brother to her. Yes. A little big brother. Duh. Frank the fucking legend. <laughs> <laughs> And Frank will go on to have a very long conversation about the multiple families that he has been a part of over the years. Uh, the six different um, companions uh, that have helped him grow with four different litters all across this land. Apparently, whenever you go to sleep, Rowan, he goes out to party. Um, and because rats, um, yeah, rats, there's a Frank infestation all over this land right now. <laughs> Oh, and Rowan God. just watches Frank while he talks like she loves him so much. Yep. Yeah. Of course, the only three people are North, Rowan, and Gal uh, Galenda that understand what he's saying. Everyone else is like, squeaky, squeak, squeak, squeaky, squeak, it or swink. Squeak. Duh. <laughs> just trying to think of it like, what? Duh. <laughs> what? What's that? Mm. <clears throat> but anyways... And talks to themselves in Infernal because it's like, I can speak in a language nobody understands, too. Oh, that's funny. Does Frank know Infernal? No, he doesn't. Damn it, could you imagine? Yeah. He knows Common, though he can't speak it. No one here knows Infernal? Really? No. I thought I Gabe did. Don't. Epistle. Ah, uh, that one. Professor F does it? No, I took something else instead. Yeah. He has hung gruel. That's spooky. Yeah. It's cool. First person in any of my games to actually take hung gruel, by the way. Thank you. Why should we bird? I speak yeah. bird. I go, ka. <laughs> ka. Mother. That is the word. <laughs> I hate you all. Oh, I just uh, got it. Uh, bird, bird, bird. Is the word. So, one thing to be mindful around here is uh, there is a little aftermath of the hell's influence on this mountain range. Some, uh, what was it? 130, 40 years ago, there was a uh, clan of Duragar that lived here. And apparently, one of the leaders of the Duragar made a deal with the Lord of Hell himself that they were not prepared to keep. Mm. Yeah. Are any of you familiar with Hells and their bureaucracy? I would be. <clears throat> I've studied some. Well, of no. course you. And somewhat religiously? Um, roll religion, actually. There is an affiliation between your faith and... Wait, are you proficient in religion? Because your religion comes with sugar daddy. Or sugar yeah. mama. I'm proficient. Okay, in... good, good, good. Just making sure, because you don't just get to roll because I worship someone who cares. Um, you know, pursue that knowledge. <laughs> Fifteen. The Queen of Ravens, and by the way, I hear reverb from somebody, like, their shit right now. Thank you, Nolf. Oh, no, that was you, Wen. Cool. Um, there is a relationship between the Queen of Ravens and the Lord of Hells. Um, it is a very tenuous one. It is not one that either side is happy that they are both associated with, since she is the goddess of fate, and as implied by fate, choice. Um, he is the Lord of Hell, 
where you are captured if you sell a section of your own faith to them. So people who sell their souls are actually selling their eternal happiness that they could have when they pass away. And because of that, neither of them like each other very much. Because, of course, she preaches, never do this. That's a terrible decision. Life is so much better after you die. And he goes, always do this. You are only you only live once. He was like, raises his hand. It's like, I somewhat know about this. Well, there was a... Uh, mistake on the one part of the dwarven clan leader and, uh, as such the lord wanted retribution and the clan found a way to make themselves eternal almost immortal, so that they wouldn't die and have to trade their souls. Nolf gets a very distasteful look on his face when he hears that. Like, he gets like a meh face. Yeah, not very good for the cycle of life. Big disturbance. But, unfortunately, they forgot who they were dealing with was the Lord of Hells. And he sent his agents and soldiers to their home. And one platoon of Hellions eradicated their entire clan, culture, and civilization. Huh. Oh. It, hmm. Kind of thing. Do you all not like spooky ghost stories over a campfire? <laughs> if you want, I could tell a few. Not, not the worst of it, but <clears throat> actual at all? Of course it is. Every good story is seeped with truth. Hmm. Yeah. Very unfortunate for them, though. Well, anyways, I suppose we should all go to bed, shouldn't we? <clears throat> yes, uh, good idea. I'll go ahead and prepare the... How is it... <clears throat> I'm assuming we can do a tiny hunt in here. If it's big enough. Take the first watch. Yes, Fulcrum, you can. Okay, I'll return and cast that then. Yeah. And I would like you all to set the precedence of your sleeping arrangement. Yeah, I'm asking Rowan right now if she wants to take first watch with me. No. I'm at. <sighs> Did she accept? I do accept. Thanks, not. Right, thank you. It's enjoyable always to have first watch with you. This will be good. Then we can sleep through the rest of the night. She kind of, he kind of whispers off to her. It's like, yeah, that's why I kind of want to do it first. How many watches are there? Uh, usually you need four watches covered. Uh, Galenda can cover two of them confidently by herself though if anybody wishes to accompany her you can because elves are bullshit and well oh no you're tied up oh so i'm out of watches completely yeah they, they can't rely on you to keep watch because you're gag tied and cool. if you fall asleep you kill them all draco why don't you take the last <laughs> watch and i'll take the first watch yeah yeah, and good. when I'll... you're incapacitated, and you are incapacitated, you can't do shit now because of their precautions. And when they can but hey, you got to sleep all night. Yeah, just kind of like over there in the corner, like you know, just made me think. <laughs> Body Pot on the Holy Grail, the guy in the thing. Like, <laughs> that's what In does. All right, so who wants right, second so watch? North had, North had first, right? With Rowan. And okay. and Gabe, and then I, I thought I was going to take the two mil watches. Gabe wants to take second watch? No, I was going to take the first watch. But uh, Nolth and Rowan are taking first watch. Yeah, Nolth and Rowan. <laughs> Gabe doesn't trust them. <laughs> so three people on first watch. Who wants second watch? 
Glinda, I thought Glinda could take two watches. So She's I taking thought... sec third and fourth, the last two. Okay, uh, I'll Draco, take... can you... yeah. Yeah, I'll take second. Alrighty, so we have one watch with three people, and then put all of your eggs on Draco and Galenda for the next three watches. No, I'm I'm trying to I'm just looking at the sheet to make sure that all right. okay. So we'll throw on Draco and then Glenda, Glenda. Uh, don't worry, Gabriel. We're fine. Uh, why so, you... <clears throat> I will take it. Um, I guess I'll do second watch with Draco. Uh, N or I mean again, uh, Rowan or uh, Nolf, she didn't want to take a watch with the watch with Glinda. We'll pull Gabe aside. I like my friend Rowan. Wait, what did you say, Rowan? Rowan's gonna pull Gabe off to the side, and yes. she's gonna lean lean into him and, and whisper, "Do you have a crush on Nolf? Because if you want." I'll just, I'll just leave this out, and then it can be the two of you. Yeah, yeah, I have a, a crush on those. He, I find him so hot. Can you, can you please <laughs> take the watch with Glenda? <laughs> I had a feeling, but I didn't want to say anything until now. Yeah, well, thank, I'll go, thanks so I'll, much to him. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go on a watch with Glenda, and then Rowan will walk by North and like, exaggeratedly young and say, oh, you know, I'm more tired than I thought. I think I'll hit a, a different watch now if that's okay. Gabe just rolls his eyes uh, and goes with it. And then Rowan will look over and wink at Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's great. Well, I guess if she's tired, I guess if she's tired, I, uh, we can wake her up later. Yeah, she, I think she needs a little start rest. Um, it's just you and me, I guess. No, nope. <laughs> I so, guess you. Should. Hey, Rowan, you can go ahead and start your fanfic. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So. As you all have set up your watches, I have to roll to see if anything happens. <laughs> That's completely up to them. Ogin, you can't affect a player's choice. Because players pay to have choices. But anyways, I think that we are going to go ahead and take our break. When we come back, one of the evenings, something might be transpiring. So, players, thank you all very much. And anybody watching, stay tuned and look out for the next session. See you around. <laughs>